Damn, I don't think she's going to make it. Her body can't handle this. It's just too much. We're just going to have to do a full component transplant. This car won't fit and there's not enough power. Another problem. Look at that connection. It's not standard. Damn you, HP. Damn you! There's no two ways. We're going to need an adapter. But we'll need to test it. Otherwise, this is all going to be a waste of time. Luckily, we got this the same day with Amazon Prime. So I'm going to be moving this motherboard from this HP ProDesk uh, 600 G1, I believe. And why? Well, because when I first bought it, I made this into a gaming computer for my daughter to play Fortnite. And this two gigabyte uh, GTX 1050 was more than enough. But as soon as Warzone came out and we started to play it, they suggested a four gigabyte card for the minimum video card. When I bought my own uh, GTX 1660, I decided, well, I can use my old GTX 970 for my daughter, but of course this will not fit in this small form factor computer and the power supply will be inadequate. Because I had an old micro ATX case, uh, Silverstone case, I decided, okay, let's do the transplant and see how it goes. Now it wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be and I'll show you what I did. It's not perfect, but hey, it works and we're enjoying some beautiful gameplay. So before I rip anything out, I'm just gonna do a test trial and I'm just gonna hook that up to the uh, cable, the Comeep cable the adapter to go from a uh, 24 pin ATX uh, power supply to the HP connections to the motherboard. Now you just have to unhook the main power from the PSU to the motherboard and there's another power connector right there. Attach the adapter to my ATX power supply and just start plugging those two cables into the motherboard. Now between the two cables, there is this other black cable which actually routes power from the motherboard to the other SATA connections. Okay, here it is. You turn on. Error right away. Oh, I forgot one more cable. Hilarious, I forgot to uh, plug in the motherboard cable. Four pin, 12 volt motherboard cable. Oops. So far everything sounds normal. Looks like that Comeep cable worked uh, pretty good. So we're up and running. So everything's working so now I'm just going to pop it into my case. This cooler, it's connected to the back of the case. So I've seen some other hacks that people have done cutting the standoffs that are holding that screw on there cutting that off and using it as a standoff into the case I could just simply get a nut that's going to fit the back of it now the other connections they should be fairly standard like the audio inputs the USB input there's a USB 3 so those should be fairly standard not sorry the front like LED power on switches are pretty standard as well the other thing are the standoffs where the motherboard will fit in are standard so thankfully HP went with that at least so this is the chassis that I'm going to be putting the HP motherboard in. It's just a micro ATX case by Silverstone, but any standard case should do. Now I just have to remove all the cables that are attached to the motherboard. Remember when removing the graphics card, there's a little tab that you have to pull to the side in order to pull the card out. Now to pull out the eight motherboard screws. And then the four screws holding the heat sink. And those must be taken out because they are held onto the case and not just the motherboard. Then the motherboard is ready to be pulled out. Now I opted to cut off the standoffs to use them as the supports for the heatsink instead of using nuts. 
only because it was just faster. They were already there for me and I didn't have to go to the store. They cut out pretty easily with some tin snips and then I just hammered them a little flatter. This may only be a fourth gen i5, but this thing is a beast for gaming. Just apply the right amount of thermal paste. And then time to get the standoffs on the back. Just carefully use a pair of pliers on the back in order to tighten down the bolts. It's actually a pretty easy job. You just want to make sure you flatten down those standoffs before you put them on uh, just so they don't protrude. And yes, you could just use a nut on the back, but do whatever works for you. Now the hard part, and that's just getting it in and connecting all the cables. And with all installations, nothing ever really goes as smooth as you hope. Now that Comeep adapter cable, that was no problem to get everything in there. One of the main problems I ran into was the SATA connectors were covered by the video card, which I never really thought about that. So I was only able to use one of the SATA connectors. Unfortunately, the 90 degree SATA cables that I had still interfered with the video card. Now my original idea was to use an SSD for the boot drive and then have the games on another 3.5 inch one terabyte drive. But of course I need two connections for that and so I just stayed with the one terabyte drive that came with the original HP. I had to do some research but I'll show you the connections for the front panel, the power switch, the hard drive LEDs, and the power LEDs. The only other thing is that there's no rear IO shield to put in as the original HP had a built-in one. There is one annoying thing on boot up where you have to press F1 because there's errors of no rear fan and no USBs connected. The interesting thing is there was no rear fan to begin with on the original HP and the USB header is connected. Granted the USB 3 connector is not connected because it is blocked by the video card as well. If anybody knows a fix, it would be greatly appreciated. But right now it's not a big deal to press F1 on the boot up. So not perfect, but something I can live with. The most important thing is, is that the computer works, runs stable, and can play our games. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I killed the guy that killed you. Thank you. Now, generally we're getting about 60 to 70 FPS in gameplay on COD Warzone. If you have a small form factor desktop office computer that has the right specs, but you need more graphics power and a bigger power supply, this is definitely a viable option. There are some annoying things with the proprietary cables, uh, the way they hook the heatsink to the computer case rather than just to the motherboard. And of course I have that problem with the startup and having to press F1 to boot properly. But most of those things are overcome and in case of the F1 ignored. And then we have this wonderful gaming experience. Now a lot of times you can get these kind of office computers for a good steal on eBay or other sites like that. So keep an eye out for them. Don't be afraid to swap them out into a different case so that you can get into this beautiful gaming experience. I haven't done this for a while, but here's a joke of the day. How do you tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? You'll see one later, and one in a while. Ha! Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next Ladybug Adventure. Ha ha ha!